So in July this year, Donald Trump is coming to visit the UK, and on the 13th of July, a massive protest is going to take place in London, and I'm going to be there. And I'll be part of the counter-protesters who are there to welcome the leader of the free world and the president of our most strong and welcome ally. Very glad to have you here, Mr. President. And naturally, the activist press, this is from The Guardian in particular, are not very happy that he's coming, and they want you to know why you should join them. Let's find out. We are organizing the rally to march not only against this dangerous man, but against the rise of all fascism and hatred. Don't you have to kind of protest yourselves then? Because you really seem to hate Donald Trump? It seems to be pathological at this point. Trump derangement syndrome is real. In just under a month, the streets of central London will be hosting a bold and diverse carnival of resistance to send a clear message to Donald Trump on his first official visit to the UK. We'd rather be a dimmy state than free. <laughs> but this has never been about one man, but about combating the politics of bigotry and hatred that the far right is peddling all around the world. Bitch, the far left is just as guilty of the politics of bigotry and hatred. No one's saying that the far right don't do this, but you guys are just the fucking same. It's really infuriating for a centrist-minded person like myself to have to deal with you people on a daily basis. The politics of walls and fences. Yeah, like Jeremy Corbyn when he's at Glastonbury. Right on this wall, build bridges. Genius. The, the demon <laughs> Through the demonization of black and brown people. When has Trump demonized black and brown people? That's not what he's doing. He's addressing real issues that really matter. And unfortunately, you guys have to come to terms with the fact that black and brown people have agency too. They can make decisions, and those decisions can be bad. Not every single one. Oh God, don't think that I'm saying all of them. But some of them. Not none of them. I know that you're, none of them have ever done anything wrong, but that's wrong as well. It's not all of them. It's not none of them. It's some of them. And the some of them that are the problem, that are causing troubles, we need to address, don't we? Don't we? In the past six weeks, almost 2,000 children have been forcibly removed from their parents at the Mexico-US border and imprisoned in cages. It's not true. They haven't been imprisoned in cages at all. They've been sent to holiday camps or summer camps, the sort of, the sort of thing that looked like a boarding school that I went to when I was young. I mean, if that's what you mean. I mean, children are forcibly removed from their parents all the time when their parents commit crimes and go to jail. Like Tommy Robinson, in fact, he's forcibly removed from his kids. Is that a problem? Oh, suddenly it's okay, isn't it? Suddenly it's only what, only when it's happening to a brown person who happens to have broken the law by trying to enter a country illegally. I mean, I suppose we could send the children to jail, but I'm pretty sure there was a court decision about that. So we have to put the children in places that are not prisons. If you're okay with that, if you can describe them the, as anything other than a cage for five minutes, which is what they're actually being prevented from being put in with their parents, you fucking lunatics. Their parents' crimes, they stand accused of being illegal immigrants. You mean, they are illegal immigrants. They entered into the US without permission, without authority, without a visa, without the government even knowing about it until they're caught. Yes, they are, they are illegal immigrants. The accusation is a sound accusation. It's, it's a legitimate accusation. They are illegal immigrants, and they committed a crime, and they knew it. And they put themselves and their children in remarkable danger by not following the official channels. I mean, don't you have a problem with people who are just putting children into the hands of child traffickers? The fact that 80% of them are raped, 80% of the women who tra make this journey are raped on the way. Don't you want to discourage women from being raped? Or are you just fine with that? Get raped and then we'll let you in. That's a weird bargain for the progressive left to strike with brown people who they claim to care so much about. Fucking weird. This obscenity is the manifestation of Trump's desire to, in the words of House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi. Right, so not Trump's fucking words, but one of his most ardent enemies who says, make America white again. That came out of her mouth, not his. That's her opinion. That's what she thinks. That's not what Trump thinks. Trump's thinking, enforce the fucking laws. Illegal immigrants are not only criminals, but they're damaging the working class people in America, and I just want to remind you, they're not all white. In fact, you would normally complain that they're disproportionately non-white. The brown people in America are being hurt by illegal immigration. You fucking idiots. But you don't care, and you can't understand what I'm saying, because your narrative won't allow for any of this.
In the UK, the government's own morally bankrupt hostile environment policies have created a similar toxic narrative around immigrants, refugees and Muslims. I, I tell you what, it's nothing to do with the fucking government. It's the people on the ground. The people who are living with these things, they're sick of it. They don't deserve to have to deal with these problems. They didn't call for this. They don't deserve it. They didn't cause it, but they are the ones suffering from it. Not that I'd expect a Guardian columnist to empathise with the poor working class of a country. You guys have got progressive virtues to signal, and I say that you have to signal them because nobody would see them just by looking at you. Your virtues are not innate and demonstrable, they're fictional. And you fucking know it. This is not a time for complacency, or a time for us to be apologetic about the values we hold dear, and our commitment to human rights. <laughs> no one thinks you have a commitment to human rights. Freedom of speech is a human right, and the left actively opposes it. The left is, in fact, the biggest threat to certain human rights in all of the Western world. So why don't you just shut the fuck up? No one buys that you are human rights activists. Not for a second. We must stand in active solidarity with Muslims, Jews... Yeah, good luck. <laughs> You're left-wingers. We know you don't stand in solidarity with Jews. <laughs> Refugees, migrants, women... What, the majority of the population? Okay, weird. Strange. Thought you guys were for minorities, not majorities, but whatever. You, you, you do you. Gay people, trans people, and all those under attack. Okay, but what about the working class natives of the countries that feel like they are being displaced in their own homes? What, what about them? Do you care about them? No, you kind of hate them, don't you? What do you call them? Oh, that's right. Gammon. Nice slur you have for white working class people in Britain. Not, not fucking demeaning at all doesn't reek of class privilege on your part. Oh no, not at all. You're the ones working for the poor, marginalised, oppressed people of the world. This is why it's imperative that we use Trump's visit to the UK on July the 13th as an opportunity to gain attention to ourselves and make it look like we're doing something for someone other than ourselves because there's no other way we can make it look that way. I mean, it's not like you guys get off your fat fucking asses. Go down to a homeless shelter and actually help someone, is there? How much food do you guys donate to food banks, just out of interest? How much money do you actually give? You don't do any of those things, do you? You don't do any of those goddamn things. What you do is this. Waste everyone's fucking time. We must use it to build a loud, intersectional, anti-racism and pro-migrant -right rights movement in the UK. Okay, what, what are migrant rights? Are they different to someone else's rights? Can we get this categorised? Can I, can I see, written down, side by side, what my rights are and what a migrant's rights are? And why a migrant's rights are more important than my rights? Why the fuck are their rights more important than mine? Just out of interest. Why do they get a special category? Can I have a special category of citizens' rights, please? I'd like to be recognised for the taxpayer that I am, the, one of the people who made this country what it is. But you would just say, we're not shy away from naming fascists for what they are, because that's what you're going to call me, isn't it? A centre-left liberal. A classical liberal who believes in the values that you hide behind. You're going to call me a fucking fascist. And will not whitewash the politics of hate, racism, and misogyny. You do nothing but whitewash your own politics of hate, racism, and misogyny. Do you remember the Grid Girls? Do you remember how they had flourishing careers until feminists came along and henpecked them down to the point where now they're not employed by the lucrative jobs that they had? Pff, hey, don't worry, it's not misogyny when you do it. And this is from The Independent. Again, the activist press, who have a giant list. Look at fucking this. All of these protests that they're helping you find. Don't, don't be shy, come down to The Independent's protest. They're going to be there because they're neutral, objective journalists. And don't forget that there's going to be a giant Donald Trump baby blimp that will be flying over London, with permission, for the mass protests during his visit, after the green light from Sadiq Khan. It's all part and parcel of living in a big city. But I tell you what, I mean, how is Donald Trump ever going to recover? The British left embarrassed themselves on the international stage yet again. Oh my god. He's never going to be elected again. It's not like we're looking at Trump 2020 or anything. No, no, no. You guys keep going. Don't change a fucking thing. It's not that you make yourselves look ridiculous. Donald Trump, we've got a big blimp of him as a baby. He's done. This is definitely the end of Donald Trump's career. You've really shown him good job. And don't forget, this is being hosted by The Guardian writer Owen Jones. Again, another neutral, independent, and certainly not activist journalist, quote-unquote, on the word journalist there. But it'll be to the 13th or 14th July, apparently, between 2 o'clock on the 13th and 8 o'clock on the 14th. 
I'll be going down there to see if I can interview any deranged lefties. And if you want to come down and meet me, I'll see you there.